welcome to Iron Lotus Tai Chi. Today we're going to have a look at a bit of um, Tai Chi walking and this is the stepping that's um, the foundation for the young style based Tai Chi. So forms like the Beijing 24 which have this kind of this sort of move with a rock back, a turn, a step in, a step out and a turn uh, based on this sort of um, footwork. The traditional young style tended not to have this rock back, it tended just to have a lift of the toe and turn, but the Beijing 24 has a clear dropping in of the front hip, turn, and then a step in. Okay, um, moves also like the brush knee move in the um, Beijing 24 would be a turn and then a step and then a little bit more turn at the end, okay? And the timing of the turn is slightly different for the different moves. So if I do this facing the camera, got my weight in this foot. If I'm doing a part of the wild horse's main move, my body is turned towards this side, I step, bring my weight forward and then I'm going to pivot around that front hip and let my back heel go back. So the step clearly comes first and then the turn. If I'm doing a brush knee move, the brush is going to come first. So the brush and turn and then the step and then just a little bit more turn at the end. And having said that, different families of um, Tai Chi tend to, some people do the brush knee, they step first and then they brush. Some people step and brush together and other families like us brush, step and then press, okay? And um, they all have different applications. As long as you have an application in mind, you're not just doing it because that's the way I always do it, you've got to have a reason behind what you're doing is all good, okay? so. What I'll do in a minute is I'll put the camera so it's focused down on my feet so that you can see a little bit more what's going on. But we'll just do a little bit um, of the real fundamentals first, okay? So the Tai Chi walking for the young style based is a little sit sunk down, okay? Shoulder width stance, not too narrow. It's not a normal walking stance, it's a bit broader, okay? And when we step, only ever stepping as far as we can get that foot out there and we put that foot down without having to bring our body weight forward. If I step and I've got to bring my body weight forward, there's this sort of thump as that hits the ground. There's also a moment where I'm committed to going forward and I can't possibly come back, okay? Whereas if that's light and I suddenly need to come back, I can come back. If I'm bringing my body weight forward as it goes in, I can't come back. I've got to sort of commit into that foot first before I can come back, okay? So in the Tai Chi, foot down, then weight forward, and then I just said, oh, I want to come back, or I want to go forward, I can go wherever I like, okay? And that's really quite important. And the step only ever goes far enough, as I said, that you can put that foot down. So if your knees are more bent, that step can go longer, as this leg straightens, the distance that you can go with your step will reduce, okay? So if you're not too flexible through the legs and not very strong, you'll be quite upright, you'll be taking a very short step. If you're a bit stronger, a bit more flexible, you'll be a little bit lower in the legs, you can take a slightly longer step, okay? And you just have to play with that to work it out, all right? I'll just do a little um, demo of a couple of the moves with the um, sword and the stick that also use this same stepping. Okay, so they have the sword, the young style based sword form has some moves in it where the toe is turned and we step back heel back a little as we come up. Okay, we rock back, we turn, we step, we draw up. Okay, so this is again the stepping that we're doing underlies these forms. Okay, so it's very useful stepping. And if you think about the foundation of a building, it's a good way to think of it. If your foundation is right, the rest of the building will be pretty good. If your foundation is not so good, the whole building will be out of whack, okay? And um, 
A lot of people, as soon as they start doing something with the top half of our body, they forget the bottom half. So it's really good to drill this walking. And if you've got a nice space where you can walk, you know, five, six meters, you know, doing your, your step, your rock, your turn is ideal, okay? So I'll just show you a tiny little bit with the stick as well. So again, the stick form has several moves that have this sort of rock and turn and step and rock and turn and step. Yeah, this, this sort of stepping. So again, it's the foundation of several different forms. So really worthwhile putting in the time to practice it, okay? Yeah, okay, so yeah, we'll do a little close up in of the floor and of my feet. Okay, so for a Tai Chi walking, we need to have a nice broad stance. So an ordinary walking stance, you might have your feet you know, close together like this, be walking like this. In Tai Chi walking stance, you're sunk down, seated in the hips, and you've got this shoulder width stance, okay? Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is just have a bit of a notice of what's going on here. Just this strip of the floor is a nice light colour. So I'm going to have one foot staying pretty much on that and the other foot staying over here near this dark strip, okay? So it's really key. Often, especially when people are starting with this, they tend to step and they have a very narrow stance of this. So when they rock and they turn, they feel almost like they're going to fall over, okay? So if we've got this broad stance, we can sink down into our knees, into our hips, and we can relax, and we won't be using tension to hold ourselves up. If we've got a very narrow stance like this, if you do the same as I'm doing, very narrow, even one foot a little bit in front of the other, you'll find that your legs tend to tense a little bit, you know, and you feel like if someone gave you a shove, you'd wobble and you'd lose your balance, okay? So you wanna have this broad stance, okay? So starting from feet about shoulder width and sinking the weight a little bit more into the left leg than the right. We're going to lift our right toe and rather than just turning this leg, we're going to turn our whole body and hips, shoulders to the corner. And that should feel like if we then were to take a step, our step would come across this way towards the corner. Okay, as it comes in, we're going to turn our hips to face straight ahead and then we're going to step back across to about shoulder width. As we come forward, we let our hips turn a little more to straighten up and we let the back heel go back a little bit. Okay. As we rock back, we want to let this front hip drop down and in. So rather than pushing up and this front hip popping up, I want to feel like it's sinking down and in. Okay. And that's quite important. If, if you're sort of pushed on here and you've popped up, you'll lose your balance, you'll fall over. If you sunk down and in and someone pushes here, it'll just sink in and in and in, and they'll feel like they're falling into a hole, okay? So we rock back, we bring that toe up, again, we turn the body to the corner, put that foot down, and you hopefully notice I'm putting that foot down, no body weight in it yet, okay? Then I bring my body weight forward, my foot follows in, if I kept going straight ahead, I would go towards the corner. So that's the point where I turn my hips, so I'm going to go straight ahead, step back across the shoulder width, heel down, again, there's no weight in that yet, foot down, again, there's no weight in it, then bring the weight forward, and as the hips turn a little bit, that back heel will tend to go back. And you want to have shoes that are not too sticky. If your shoes are very sticky, it puts a lot of pressure on your knees as you do this, okay? So we're going to rock back again, toe comes up, again as we rock back make sure that this hip is dropping down and in and back rather than popping up, okay? So we want to let it drop down and back, almost like you could call it like a hip curtsy, you know, if you had a little skirt and you were dropping a little curtsy and your bottom was going backwards a little bit, that's, that's a bit the feeling, so we're folding here at the hip or at the quad. We turn the body to turn the toe to the corner. We step in towards the corner. And again, we turn, 
step across to about shoulder width, foot down again, no weight in it yet, then bring the weight forward. Okay, we rock back again, again letting this front hip drop down and in, so there's a clear feeling of folding here, turn, foot down, step in, turn, step to shoulder width again, no weight, heel down, foot down, then the weight forward. Now once we're in that weight forward position, I just want you to just experiment a little bit with rocking back and forward and see if you can get a little feeling of that you're coming up a little bit at the back, sinking down in the middle, coming up a little bit at the front, sinking down. So you've got a little pendulum. Okay, as we come forward, we want the tailbone to tuck under a little bit. As we come back, the tailbone still tucked under but not, not quite so much. Okay, so again, as we come forward, it tucks under. And if that comes under, the front of the body tends to come up, which will help our pushes or our brush knee moves to come up as well, okay? So we'll rock back, we'll just do one more step, turn, put that foot down, then bring the weight into it, step in, turn, shoulder width stance, step. Okay, so if we were doing the Beijing 24 form, after we've done several moves with this stepping, there's a move where we go backwards, the repulse monkeys move. So if we rock our weight back so that front foot is up, when we're going backwards, we draw this foot in. It's almost like we're drawing a crescent moon shape with this foot. So we draw it in and then back, back out to the side. We put it down and then we draw our weight back. Okay? So same again. Now you can bring this in very low and then take it out to the side, also very low in that curve. Or if you prefer to, you can bring your foot up a little and then put it down, okay? Again, making sure we've got this clear feeling of this foot coming in close and then coming back. And again, maintaining this shoulder width stance. If we step back and we don't have the curve, our feet end up one behind the other, we feel like we're very wobbly, okay? All right, so we'll just go same again. And again, remembering the key thing, broad stance allows you to relax. Narrow stance will tend to cause tension and instability, okay? So we've got this broad stance. We've got one foot, again, I'm keeping roughly on this one. And if you're doing this with a, a floor which has tiles or some sort of lines or floorboards on it, is really quite helpful because that can help you to maintain your shoulder width stance. The other thing you want to think about as well is try not to look down at your feet as you do this. So at first you'll tend to look to make sure you're doing what you're doing, but that sort of bends your neck and you know is not a very good postural alignment. So we want to feel that we're, we're looking straight ahead, okay? So again, if we're in our shoulder width stance, we can lift our right toe, we can turn our whole body, Turn the toe to the corner, drop our weight into it, bring the foot in, turn, step to shoulder width, as we come forward, back heel back a little bit. Rocking back, this front hip feeling like it's folding, dropping back and in again, like a little hip curtsy. Turn, front toe down, no weight in it yet, bring the weight forward, step in, turn, step across the shoulder width, heel down, foot down, weight forward. Rocking back, and again, letting this hip drop down and in. Turn the body. Step in. Turn and step. Okay, now we'll just go one more time. We'll rock back. Front hip dropping in and down, folding, turn. Step in. Turn and step. Now, in, ter in terms of when we do our turn, in the Beijing 24, if we're doing a brush knee move, we turn and then we step. If we're doing a part of the wild horse's mane move, we step and then we turn. Okay? So the stepping is almost the same, but a little bit different depending on what move you're doing. Same could be said for the, um, the moves in the sword form and the stick form. Generally though, there's the most common is to turn then step, okay?
So we'll just go the same again and just a little bit of a look at how far out do we step. So if my legs are very straight, I'm only ever in my Tai Chi going to step far enough that I can put my foot down and I put my toe down without my weight having to come forward to get that toe down. So if I'm if I'm very straight legged, it's going to be a very short step to be able to put that toe down without bringing my weight forward. If I take that further forward, my whole body is falling forward and there's a, a sort of a bump rather than it being a perfectly smooth flow of the weight forward and back, okay? So if my knees are very bent, I can step far further and I can put that down without bringing my body weight further forward, okay? But as I straighten up, the length of that step reduces, okay? So you want to just try and find a stance that's comfortable with a comfortable amount of knee bend for you. In Tai Chi, we tend not to take the knee past the toe, okay? And that's from your perspective looking down from an upright stance. So if I'm looking down, I can just see the tip of my toe. If I lean forward, this leg is it's not on an angle forward like that. It's just pretty much straight up and down, okay? So we tend to step to that point where that front leg is straight up and down, which if you're standing nice and upright again, you should just be able to see the tip of your toe, okay? If we're bending too far, like this puts too much pressure on the knee and, yeah, it can cause issues, okay? So we don't want to do that, all right? So let's just do that one more time. Again, shoulder width stance, seated, sunk down, so the leg's not too straight, the tailbone's a little bit tucked under, lifting the toe and turning the whole body to turn that toe, rather than just turning the leg. Drop the weight into it, bring the other foot across. If I'm doing a brush knee, I'm going to turn, step, and then just turn a little more. Okay? If I'm doing a part of the wild horse's mane, I'm going to step, Come forward and then turn. Okay, rock back, toe comes up, turn, step in. And again, if I'm doing a brush knee, I'm going to turn first and then step, like so. If I'm doing a part of the wild horse's mane, I'm going to keep my body turned towards the left here. I'm going to step, I'm going to bring my weight forward, and then I'm going to turn and let that back heel go back a little. Okay, so we rock back, we turn, we step in, turn, step, and again, foot flat, then weight forward. This hip, dropping down and in, folding as I come back and turn, stepping in, turn, step. Okay, and just a little bit again of the going backwards. We have the weight in this leg, we draw the foot in and back, we put it down, then we draw our weight back. Okay, we draw the foot in and back, drop it down, and then we draw the weight back. That same again, in and out, foot down, then weight back. Okay, and now that enables us to do moves in a quite strong way. Okay. Okay guys, hope you've enjoyed the lesson, hope it's been useful and informative. If you liked it, please um, like, share, subscribe. If you like to, you can make a contribution. And remember, the stepping is the foundation. You get the stepping right, with a good chance of getting everything on top of it right. If that stepping's not right, everything above it is going to suffer in your form. Okay, so keep practicing. Have a great day. Thanks for joining.